Will you do a video on Alan Watts, Russell? Said loads of you. So here is a video by me on Alan Watts, who I admire for a number of reasons, not least his voice. I like having spirituality dispatched by a calm, casual Englishman, clipped, well-spoken, beautifully addressing matters of Zen and Brahman. <coughs> for those of you who don't know anything at all about Alan Watts, here's some information about Alan Watts. Alan Watts is a well-known British philosopher, writer, speaker, best known for his interpretation of Eastern philosophy for Western audiences. He wrote more than 25 books on the subjects of philosophy and religion, including The Wisdom of Insecurity and The Way of Zen. In his book, The Book on the Taboo Against Knowing Who You Are, he argues that the prevalent sensation of oneself as a separate ego enclosed in a bag of skin is a hallucination which accords neither with Western science nor with the experimental philosophy religions of the East. Ow. You're not who you think you are. Let's learn more. In this clip, Alan Watts talks about the nature of self and the nature of the ego. I suppose ego is one of them terms that gets banded around in psychiatry, but also in common popular discourse now. You know, and not always negatively, like dear Eckhart Tolle. Was it Eckhart Tolle? No, Terence McKenna says, like, uh, your ego is what lets you know that if two people are eating for dinner, put food in your mouth, not the other person's. And having a sense that you are connected to this anatomy is no doubt a necessary psychological institution. Let's see what Alan Watts has to say about the ego and let's enjoy what this dude looks like, for God's sake. Now from the moment we were little children, when teachers in class screamed at us, pay attention, we go tight in various ways, either to see or hear more clearly, to concentrate or to will something which is supposed to be difficult to do. And that constitutes a habitual tension over the whole body that's there almost all the time and that feeling of unnecessary tension is, as it were, the material sensation upon which we fasten this concept of I. The concept is not us. The feeling of tension is completely phony. It has nothing to do with success in seeing, hearing, or acting. And so we get the marriage of an illusion with a falsehood, and that we call ourselves. I like how he describes the inevitable indoctrination that takes place as we pass through systems, like in his example, in institutions of education, you experience and encounter tension, stress and threats and begin to associate that externally provoked stimulation, I suppose all stimulation is externally provoked, maybe, but you begin to amalgamate with that in terms of identity. That's an interesting thing. Even in this moment now, I'm aware that I'm talking to you. If I sort of let myself go calm and I become aware of the feeling of having hands and, I, and become aware of the feeling of having senses, I'm continually editorialising, collating and curating these experiences. What is self though, other than the awareness of these facilities? And no wonder we feel cut off from everything, alienated, frightened of life and death. So what has to happen is we have to come back to a saying, view of our own life, which is the way we really are, an organism functioning in terms of the whole environment, with the whole environment, instead of this funny little separate personality. But how are we going to do that? People say, oh, you can't change human nature overnight. You're asking us to give up the ego. And that's the most difficult of all things to do. Actually, it isn't. Because the ego doesn't exist. But of course, if you try to give up your ego with your ego, then it'll take you to the end of time. I'm trying to give up my ego. I'm going to use my ego. Wait a minute. Oh, no. I'm in an ego conundrum. He looks perfect, doesn't he, for a sort of 60s philosopher elf king with his pointy beard and his unusual shaped eyes, his magnificent hair. He's a very extraordinary person and I suppose well cast as an elf in wisdom dispenser. Is, in terms of the content of what he's saying, the, the way this plays out in some of the f philosophies or systems of thought, at least that I understand, is being able to let go and observe your own emotions. Like when I feel fearful or anxious, I try to watch the feeling rather than become embedded in the feeling. When I notice that an external stimulant or sensation is governing, hypnotizing, or in somehow entrancing me, I try to return via perhaps the breath or some mantra to a sort of central awareness. Sometimes on walks, I try to stop thinking 
and just look around and be in nature and be among trees or even in this moment to be aware of what surrounds me and what I am and how temporary I am, how temporary my form is and to note that there are so many systems of, systems of filtration that, take, that are placed between me and reality. My senses, my sense of touch and sight and sound, all of it is somehow is passing through various filters. If you can't trust your own senses and your own interpretation, how does that affect the way that we relate to structures and systems of power? How can we objectively interpret information and respond to it? There's so much of what we take for granted as real is present or seemingly present as a result of inculcation. What I mean is, for example, this is how we behave. You know, and perhaps you don't think of yourself as conditioned, but neither of us presumably would get up in the morning and just wander out the house naked. And why is that? Well, it's bloody cold, it's disgusting. There's loads of reasons, but it is also as a result of conditioning. Because this is the point. You can't transform yourself. You can't make yourself sane. You can't make yourself loving. You can't make yourself unselfish. And yet it's absolutely necessary that we be that way. If we are going to hand over the direction of nature to nature, which is what it comes to, it's absolutely necessary. I like this idea that nature is a powerful force, that within us there's a great intelligence at work running our organic systems and our biology. And from the materialistic and atheistic perspective, this is like a happenstance, a cooperation of myriad accidents. But for Alan Watts and for me, the idea that there's an intelligence at work in my body is somehow awesome. I wouldn't try to personify that or think that you can sort of mobilize it towards magic, but I recognize it as being in harmony with a greater nature in so much as, you know, I'm comparable to my ancestors, I'm comparable to other human beings, I'm comparable to other carbon-based life forms, that I'm in some kind of harmony with them, some kind of... Um, symbiosis with the natural world, all of which displays intelligence in so much as it's a pattern without even personifying it or idealizing it or making it a system of morals and ethics. The idea that there is a oneness taking place that I'm a participant in is for me evident and glorious. That we let go of ourselves and it can't be done. Not by anything that we call doing it, acting, willing, or even just accepting things. You can't do it. Why? because you don't really exist as that kind of a separate ego or personality. It's just an idea. All right, mate, I just said, where's the station? Do me head in. Like, he goes for it, doesn't he, Alan Watts? I mean, you can't have a conversation with Alan Watts where he's not going to delve down into the essential nothingness at your core, that you're a conglomeration of memories, of programming and conditioning and beliefs. It's extraordinary to be confronted by that in such a conversational and calm and uh, pedagogic manner, I suppose I would say. Some famous quotes of Alan Watts is to take with you as we familiarise ourselves with this uh, very notable, brilliant, enjoyable, and judging from the comments, in, uh, popular thinker. He says, on the subject of ego, Ego is a social institution with no physical reality. The ego is simply your symbol of yourself, just as the word water is a noise that symbolises a certain liquid without being it. So too, the idea of ego symbolises the role you play, who you are, but it is not the same as your living organism. We have an idea of the self, but who are we really? That's why things happen to you and you surprise yourself. You're surprised by your response to events. You're surprised when your heart is broken. You're surprised by your own emotions because well, there is such a competing network of odd emotions, desires, drives and fears that corralling it together under one ego itself is just like trying to dub nature by one name. The most strongly enforced of all known taboos is the taboo against knowing who or what you really are behind the mask of your apparently separate, independent and isolated ego. And I suppose what Alan Watts is pointing out with that quote is that most of us act out our conditioning without really investigating who we are, who we could be. When plunged into cold water, you hear respiratory sounds that you don't associate with yourself. Sometimes in uh, acts of sexual congress you will discover energy in yourself you didn't know was present. Sometimes through hallucinogens or meditative experience you'll find undiscovered terrain within yourself coming to life. Art can inspire this, religion can inspire this, science can inspire or some precipitary newness within you. So 
I agree with what Alan Watts is saying there about the ego, that the ego is a construct, it's a faith-based system, the same way as a nation is. Maybe the ego is the nation of the self, in the same way that we believe there is a France or an England and it has a flag and it has a set of ideals, characteristics, stereotypes, tropes and traits, maybe the self is the same way. A coral together set of beliefs that if they are causing us to be unhappy and how can they not ultimately because of the transient nature of life, then we should begin an investigation to undercut them, to overthrow them, to connect with a deeper, ever-present and abiding reality. I hope you like that video. If you do like it, like it with that thumb thing there. The more likes I get, the more the video gets circulated. If you're not subscribing to this channel yet, subscribe to it right now and press the notification so I can communicate directly with you. Go over to russellbrand.com, sign up to my mailing list, then we'll be in total communion, your ego and my ego and the parts of us that are already connected in total harmony. I'm doing live shows at the moment in the south of England. Just 20, few tickets left. Go to russellbrand.com if you want to come and see me live. Thank you.